Hey guys, Spence here. So, Heil Sion 6 Starbase Commander. This game was made and released by Massive Damage Incorporated with the help of Ontario Media Development Corporation. Whatever they did, they got credit on the main site, so it must have been important. Anyway, this game was kickstarted back in March in 2015, and before its Steam release, I had never heard of this game before. So, promising to have a unique blend of base building, exploration, and deep tactical JRPG style combat? What exactly is going on in Halcyon 6 Starbase Commander? In the far off future, all the alien races, including humans, have battled it out, and he wants to come out on top in regards to who is dominant in the sector. And everything was going just fine, especially since the humans found a special space station that was made by the Precursors. Basically alien races that existed before all the other alien races existed. Sci-fi backdrop. And they were in the middle of doing experiments trying to unlock the secrets of it, when portals leading to another space and time started opening up and flooding with gigantic Zerg-like aliens. And after your superior officer dies in the first contact with these things, you are left in charge, and now it's up to you to save the Terran Federation, fight off the alien threat, and maintain it while dealing with various other alien factions and the space pirates. And that's largely it when it comes to the story. Most of the gameplay is you dealing with the daily grind of fighting off alien invasions, talking to alien emissaries, and dealing with space pirates. But the game definitely has its own style, definitely working in a lot of the typical space tropes like the Collective, who are a race of synthesized humans. And there's even a Collective pirate who broke away from the Collective because he deemed himself an individual as opposed to a part of the whole. In short, you're not going to come here for the story, but the game's style will definitely shine through, especially if you like sci-fi. Now gameplay. Ah oh boy, where do I start? Let's start with the Starbase since you'll spend most of your time managing the going-ons within there. Here you'll be building basically everything from officers to starships and managing different aspects such as the different tech trees and other rooms that will either help by generating more resources or increasing the power output within the base allowing you to add more rooms. Basically the starbase is extremely similar to the bases in the newer XCOM games, so if you understand how those work you'll quickly understand this system. Now where you're not managing the going-ons within the starbase, you're doing three things out in the big galaxy. One, try to re-establish connections between the Terran colonies out in the galaxy. Two, fight off the interdimensional alien invaders who will also attack these colonies after you re-establish connections with them. And three, dealing with the space pirates, either through negotiations or through combat, though usually combat. But before you can do any of those things, you need starships, and before that, you need officers to captain them. Now, your officers will be the backbone of your campaign, and when you get the option to obtain a new one, you will always have the option between the three different types. First, there are tactical officers known for their offensive capabilities, then the science officers who are known for their support capabilities, namely healing, and then the engineering officers who are known for their high resilience. Though let me be clear, every officer has offensive capabilities, so if you start off with a science officer, it's not like you're completely defenseless. Now aside from captaining starships, these guys are also the ones you'll rely on when you're in ground combat. If you are trying to expand a base, you'll have to assign an officer to that task, and if you're trying to recruit a new officer, you have to assign another one to the academy. Then there are the starships, which act as the arms and legs, the legs for going places and arms for phaser shooting. They come in three categories, tactical, science, and engineering, and take a wild guess which officers go where. After you make one, you can assign them to a fleet, though fleets can only be made up of three ships at any given time. And after that, you can send them out to do various tasks, namely the re-establishing connections, fighting off aliens, and fighting space pirates, or negotiating, as the case may be. Now the colonies. After you re-establish connections with them, they will generate one of four currencies. Crew, materials, dark matter, or fuel. The only thing is, while they do generate them over time, you have to send a fleet over to collect it and then bring it back to the starbase if you want to have access to that given resource. And remember, you have to defend these colonies too from the aliens who will start to attack them if you leave them be for too long. Which, while fighting the aliens is very important, you don't want to fight them too often because on average, these guys tend to be way more dangerous than spice pirates. Who can be useful in their own given way? You see, all the space pirates basically are split up into different clans and factions, and after you destroy one of their fleets, typically they'll ask for a face-to-face. -face. And in the face-to-face, -face, they'll usually try to break a deal with you, usually something to the effect of, we'll leave the Federation alone if you go and kill X pirate member. But regardless of this, you'll probably be fighting them the most. If not for the dark matter and resources that they'll drop, then because they'll keep bombarding your base randomly. 
Now combat itself comes in two flavors, space combat and ground combat. And in both cases, they're very typical JRPG fares with your character speed determining the turn order and whatever skills your character has it will be the skills they have to their disposal. With the big difference being in space combat, your character is reliant on the skills that your ship has along with their own skills. While in ground combat, your officer is reliant on whatever skills they have. So it's entirely possible to have an officer who's really good at space combat, but really bad at ground combat. The main thing that stands out about the combat is the status and exploit system. In this game, yeah, you can give characters status effects, like let's say bleeding, doing damage over time. But in a follow-up action, if an officer uses a skill that, let's say, exploits bleeding on the same target, then that attack will do significantly more damage, with the trade-off being that the target then loses that status effect. This adds another tactical layer to the combat, so now you're just trying to decide if you want to use a status effect to its fullest extent, or try to kill the enemy as fast as possible. This also encourages you to try to develop fleets that have a lot of synergy in them. Especially in combat later on, where the amount of synergy your different teams will have will very much so make or break you in some of these confrontations. Gameplay itself, it's alright, but it does not resonate with me, and I generally just don't feel like spending that much time with the game. First off, a lot of the systems we've been talking about are clearly surface level and on the shallow side. Upgrades on the tech trees for officers are largely filled out by upgrades for their existing skills, upgrades for your ships are largely just number increases as opposed to learning interesting abilities, and the things you can research on the starbase are once again just number increases, increase the amount of dark matter you get, increase the amount of resources you get. Stuff like that, and in this game there's permadeath, you can lose your officers, you can lose starships, you can lose colonies, and guess what, I don't feel very attached to anything in this because of this lack of customization I guess you would say. Nothing in this game really feels like it's mine, and not only that, but at any time I lost something, whether it's a really good officer or a colony, my initial thought is, well that's a bummer, I guess we'll have to get another one. Meanwhile in other games, my response would be, let's say, much different. Now a lot of these systems we've seen in other games that are deeper than this and just makes me want to play those instead. XCOM 1, XCOM 2, FTL, Invisible Ink, Darkest Dungeon, Massive Chalice. Yes, there easily can be just a taste thing as the game is relatively easy to pick up and play and that in its defense is very much a good thing because I could just jump in this game and start playing it and know exactly what I was doing as opposed to XCOM where if I stop playing it for a week I'll be completely lost at what my plan was. Secondly, you're just managing the time you have with your officers as they only can do three things. They can be going out across the galaxy to kill stuff or collect things, or they are staying back at the starbase helping you build stuff. It goes in a cycle of kill stuff so you can collect stuff, so you can build better stuff, so you can kill better stuff, so you can collect more stuff, so you can build more stuff. And it goes in this cycle over and over and I don't really find it engaging. And yes, you can arguably break this down for other games too and make them sound bad, but in this case, the game really didn't resonate with me. Maybe it's the lack of visual customization, maybe it's the lack of interesting skills you can have your characters learn a lot of the time, maybe it's the lack of depth with a lot of the systems, but in general, the gameplay just is okay at best. If you're into strategy games, it's up your alley, but don't expect something particularly great. When it comes to the presentation, it's another sprite-based game, and so the options menu is very limiting. The only thing you really do is mess around with your resolutions and toggle on or off if when an officer or cadet dies, will they turn to a bloody mess. On the visual front, it definitely succeeds having pretty good sprite art for the most part, and I always love the little character animations they have during the negotiation scenes. Especially when characters lose their cool, that always brings a smile to my face. On the sound front, it's a sorta orchestrated-ish chiptune soundtrack. A lot of the pieces are alright, but it's a big case of some being more catchy than others, and it just a lot of it just went over my head for the most part. On the presentation front, it definitely succeeds. A lot of that style I mentioned earlier comes through the dialogue and visuals, but in general, it's on the better side of okay. And that's how Scion 6 Starbase Commander. Would I recommend this game? Not particularly. And I get the sinking impression that this opinion is exclusive to me, so just remember, this is just my opinion on it. The shallowness of the mechanics, the lack of visual customization, how a lot of the upgrades are instead of being something particularly interesting, just make numbers bigger, and the limited amount of things you can really research in your starbase. It all just kind of boils down to a game that the time and effort I put into it, I don't feel particularly invested in it, and when I look back on the time I spent with it, the mechanics don't pull me back over to it. In conclusion, it's a game that takes a lot of cues from other games, and like some articles said, it has a lot of potential, but as far as I'm concerned, it's just a pretty mediocre game. 
Maybe I've been spoiled by other games, but if you're not new to permadeath games and play stuff like Darkest Dungeon, XCOM, XCOM 2, and Massive Chalice on the Norm, this is definitely aimed at you, but it probably won't hold your attention for very long. Hello again, thanks for watching. If you happen to like this sort of content, drop a like, comment, subscribe, and maybe tell a friend to also be interested in this sort of content. In the meantime, you can click on the left annotation to see the last video I did, talking about God Eater 1 Resurrection and God Eater 2 Rage Burst. Both games about killing stuff so he can collect stuff so he can craft better stuff so he can kill bigger stuff. On the other hand, if you want to try a stealth strategy game, then I recommend checking out Invisible Ink. You can click on the right annotation and see my older video on that. Hell, I don't want my toaster or my vacuum cleaner appearing emotional. I did not murder him!